Gross. I'm Ricky Gross, Water Art Master Trainer. Welcome to the Water Art Cycle Exercise. What we're looking at, Julie, what you're doing actually is leaning forwards, which is what happens in a bicycle movement. The body naturally leans a little forward using the abdominal muscles and the trunk muscles. They just work. It's a natural. No, no extra thought process there. What I'm showing you right here is a jog. And why don't you go ahead and try and do that, Julie? The jog movement is either not weight bearing where you are in the deep pool or shallow where your feet are actually touching the ground. With a jog, your knees may come higher than your hip joint, your trochanter sitting in the acetabulum. Your abdominals work differently <laughs> and your heel goes down toward the ground. You don't need a flexed foot, but you do need to let your leg extend down toward the ground. With the bicycle, Julie, you're going to let your leg come just to 90 degrees, the thigh is parallel, 90 degrees to the ground. Extend your lower leg and pull backwards. Let's turn around and try that going in that direction. I'll demonstrate again a jog, his knee coming up towards the chest. It may go higher than the hip joint, further than 90 degrees. Working the abdominals, the buttocks, muscles differently. The bicycle or the cycle movement is laying parallel to the ground. Extend the lower leg from the thigh to the knee. Keep your straight leg pulled down and back behind you using the extensor muscles of the back and the thigh. And then come back up to start position. That alternates right with left. This is a non-weight bearing exercise. Tries to be encouraged not to go higher than 90 degrees at a hip joint. Alrighty, Julie, how are you feeling? Excellent. Good to move. We're going to look at what's part of our cycle workout is, is using the music and actually learning the, the rhythm stroke. And not the rhythm stroke that's my rhythm stroke, but what you feel in the water. To demonstrate this, I'm going to be clapping. I'm going to try as hard as I can to keep my rhythm on a rhythmic beat and ask Julie to find her rhythm in the water using as much of a range of motion as she can to the best of her ability. When we started about 30 seconds ago, Julie, you were at a moderate level of intensity. How do you feel now on a scale of 1 to 10, your heart rate? After at least 30 seconds or at least 12 to 8 repetitions, your heart rate will go up. Okay, here we go. We're going to add in some just some drills. We've got five different drills that you can add in just to your class. We're next to one, two. One of the best ways to overload the lower body is to steady the arms in a prayer position. Hold the arm still and allow the legs to utilize full range of motion and Another excellent exercise is called a quadruped. Assume that you're on your hands and knees and keep your back tabletop. Let's roll up. Utilize your abdominals, suck your belly button to your backbone and roll up. The low back, hamstrings, and calves together act as a very tight set of muscles. Try and do some roll-ups to loosen up the lower back and spine throughout the program if you're feeling tight. Alrighty, so when we're with, when you're working in the water, and you, if you are not comfortable um, working in the water, if you're a non-swimmer, Welcome to use any type of buoyancy. What we have here is a jog belt where the straps are on the outside of the belt and it fits around the body. You can wear it in front of your body for buoyancy balance or behind your body for buoyancy balance. The way to check how balanced you are in the water with your belt on, either starting off behind, let your feet hang horizontal or vertical down towards the ground, sculling your hands, and just let yourself float wherever you're comfortable. If the buoyancy is correct, you'll stay upright almost. If you're too much buoyancy behind, you will lean forwards. And then you come up vertical again, switch your 
belt, job belt in this case, to the front and try the whole point. 